With Artemis 1 finally making its first successful flyby of the moon right now and providing a much needed shakedown cruise for NASA's SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft, we can start to talk seriously about the next major step for the Artemis program, and that is the human landing system. This is a critically important vehicle that will ferry astronauts from the orbiting Orion spacecraft onto the surface of the moon. And we know that the role of the HLS lander for Artemis 3 is going to be played by a lunar variation of the SpaceX Starship. That means all eyes are on SpaceX right now as they push towards the first test flight of the Starship and Super Heavy launch system. What does the future hold for SpaceX and NASA on the moon? Let's talk about it. By now, we're all very familiar with Artemis 1, the uncrewed test flight of the SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft. For everything we've seen so far, it looks like that test has been successful, assuming that re-entry of the capsule next month goes according to plan. So, that sets the stage for Artemis 2, which is basically a replay of Artemis 1, just with people on board this time. That's likely to happen in the year 2024, Hopefully. It's going to be a major accomplishment for NASA, but still very much a test flight for this new equipment. Then we get to Artemis 3, and this is the big show. Landing people on the moon. NASA is still holding on to the idea that this could happen as early as 2025, but realistic forecasts seem to put this somewhere between 2026 and 2028. This is a really tricky mission because now a lot of moving parts from different places need to all come together perfectly. So, the third Artemis flight is much the same deal as the second one. SLS launches Orion, which takes people to orbit around the moon. But this time, they're going to the surface. Very exciting. The only problem being that Orion can't land. The thing about Orion is that it's designed to move people through deep space but it's not designed to land them anywhere. It's missing that last mile delivery method, which seems like an oversight, but no worries, because NASA just brought yet another spaceship into the mix, and that is where we enter SpaceX. So NASA is in need of a lander. The plan is to transfer two out of four members of the Artemis III crew from Orion to a human landing system, or HLS, that will be waiting for them in lunar orbit and then have that lander descend to the surface of the moon, where those people will hang out for around five days, and then fly the HLS back to orbit, where they swap back to Orion, and triumphantly return to the Earth. Originally, there was supposed to be a fancy space station waiting for them in lunar orbit called the Gateway. That would have made for a transfer point between the two vehicles, and given a place to chill for the other two Artemis crew members who don't get to walk on the moon. But NASA have conceded that Gateway won't be ready for Artemis 3, which is fine. The contract to build that human lander for Artemis 3 was awarded to SpaceX in 2021. They pitched a variation of their Starship vehicle that would carry both people and a large amount of equipment to the surface of the moon and back up again. Remembering that the original design purpose of the Starship is to get people to Mars and back again. Quick trips to the moon should be no big deal. By the way, if you're enjoying the content we create here on the Tesla space and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page. We've got some exclusive perks for our Patreon supporters, and it helps us grow the team and continue producing this content. So obviously one major hurdle that the Starship needs to clear within the next few months is a successful flight to orbit. Now that we are finally done with waiting on the SLS, Starship is our next hotly anticipated rocket test, and we're still pretty hopeful that this can be done before the end of the year, but wouldn't bet heavily on it. There are some very positive signs. SpaceX has completed a static fire with 14 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster, the largest cluster of Raptors ever fired at once, and that went off without a hitch. Elon Musk seems to think that his company is pretty close to final testing now on the Starship, he tweeted on November 15th, 
Next test is about 20 seconds firing with max oxygen fill to test autogenous pressurization, possibly one more static fire, and then orbital launch attempt. But Elon is no stranger to making overly optimistic predictions. That might be why he made the recent move to put SpaceX COO Gwyn Shotwell in place as the new operations manager of the Starship program at Starbase. She is a longtime SpaceX leader who is known for a pragmatic and methodical approach to aerospace development, so we're really looking to her on a realistic timeline for when Starship gets off the ground. And then even if the orbital launch program all goes well and we see Starship reliably getting to space and back again, there is still a second major hurdle to overcome, orbital refilling. Because the Starship is so massive, it's going to burn a lot of methane and oxygen fuel just to reach orbit. Most of the oxidizer is going to be depleted by the time the ship is in stable orbit, so it won't really have enough juice left to go to the moon. That means Starship actually has to be refilled in space with a second Starship acting as a tanker, which is an unprecedented maneuver. There has never been a cryogenic fuel transfer done in space before, and it's going to take multiple fueling sessions for one starship to reach the moon. Elon Musk says three or four sessions will get the job done. So that means SpaceX needs to put one tanker ship in orbit, and then send probably three more transport ships up to dock with the tanker and transfer fuel. And then the final fuel transfer needs to be done between the tanker and the lunar starship on its way to the moon. That sounds sketchy, but NASA knew all of this information when they rated SpaceX with the highest technical score of the three contestants in their contract bidding process. Starship received three significant strengths due to its cargo capacity and the fact that SpaceX are actually building and testing this system right now in real life. There were 10 strengths, 6 weaknesses, and 1 significant weakness. That one significant weakness was identified as the operational complexity of refueling the ship in orbit. NASA wrote in their report, quote, SpaceX's mission depends upon an operations approach of unprecedented pace, scale, and synchronized movement of the vehicles in its architecture. This includes a significant number of vehicle launches in rapid succession, the refurbishment and reuse of those vehicles, and numerous in-space cryogenic propellant transfer events. NASA's report went on to say, quote, However, these concerns are tempered because they entail operational risks in Earth orbit that can be overcome more easily than in lunar orbit, where an unexpected event would create a much higher risk to loss of mission. Elon Musk has said that SpaceX intends to begin testing their orbital docking and refilling procedure within the first year of Starship operation, so we might see this attempted by the end of 2023. Assuming that all goes well, then we are set for a lunar-optimized version of the Starship. This is going to be a very different beast from the design that we are seeing at Starbase right now. The current orbital Starship is being built to deliver large quantities of satellites into Earth orbit, and then return to the surface for a ground landing into the waiting arms of a giant robot tower. So the top half of the current ship is just a big empty cargo bay. That's going to have to change for HLS. The HLS Starship will need to have a pressurized crew compartment with a life support system. People are going to live in there for several days, and they need to be comfortable. Elon said earlier this year that SpaceX can scale up the same life support system from the Crew Dragon to support astronauts in the Starship for up to a few weeks. So that's going to be the topmost section of the ship, with a hatch probably on the nose of the rocket. Then below the crew section will be a cargo bay that houses their research equipment and probably a rover of some kind for astronauts to drive around on the moon, possibly made by Tesla. Could we see a lunar Cybertruck? Probably not, but it could happen. And then that cargo section is going to also have to include an elevator lift to actually get down to the surface of the moon. Starship is super tall, 50 meters in height, and the access door for the cargo section is going to be about halfway up the vehicle. The bottom half is going to be oxygen and methane tanks to power the ship's flight from low Earth orbit to the moon. And unlike the existing Starship, which uses those main Raptor engines for a controlled landing on Earth, 
the lunar ship is going to have an extra set of thrusters built into the side that will control the slow descent to the surface of the moon. Landing on the moon is going to be much easier and less dramatic than the kamikaze skydive and last second engine burn that Starship has to make on its return to Earth. And that's the other major difference for a lunar Starship. It does not need a heat shield or aero flaps because the HLS will never return to Earth. In order for the HLS Lunar Starship to meet its final qualification for use on Artemis 3, the ship will need to successfully complete one uncrewed test landing demonstration on the moon and then return successfully to lunar orbit. That will be a test of the entire system from the super heavy launch booster to the orbital refilling to the Lunar Starship's unique landing thrusters and legs and lastly its capability to make a controlled launch from the moon. SpaceX seems optimistic that this test landing can happen in 2024, so hopefully that can align fairly closely with Artemis 2, and that could mean that in just two years from now, we will know for sure if people are ready to go back to the moon. And not only will a SpaceX Starship be returning humans to the moon for the first time in 50 years, NASA has already selected the Starship as their preferred design for ongoing operations on the moon in the future of the Artemis program. What is really cool about Artemis is that NASA intends to establish a real and continuous human presence on the moon, establishing a permanent moon base that can be used as a stepping stone to reaching the planet Mars. And a big part of that lunar infrastructure is going to be a steady supply of lander vehicles to support not just people, but also large amounts of cargo to the moon. On November 15th, NASA awarded SpaceX a $1.5 billion contract to develop an upgraded version 2 of their lunar starship that will fly a second crewed mission to the moon. This is an option B clause from the first HLS contract between NASA and SpaceX. NASA's HLS program manager told reporters in a statement, continuing our collaborative efforts with SpaceX through option B furthers our resilient plans for regular crewed transportation to the lunar surface and establishing a long-term human presence under Artemis. This critical work will help us focus on the development of sustainable service-based lunar landers anchored to NASA's requirements for regularly reoccurring missions to the lunar surface. And NASA has also confirmed that the first crewed flight of the Option B Starship lander will be as early as Artemis 4. So that should give NASA two operational lunar Starship landers by the end of this decade. So we've got a lot of major Starship milestones to look forward to over the next couple of years. The first orbital flight, the first landing, the first orbital refilling, and the first moon landing. That's going to be pretty wild. So let us know what you're most excited to see and when you think Artemis 3 will make its crewed landing on the moon. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.